I'm Garrett Ryan, and this is the short answer. Today's question is, were gladiators fat? The following is an abridged excerpt from my book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, Frequently Asked Questions About the Ancient Greeks and Romans. We don't know how the gladiator fell. Maybe a net caught his ankles. Maybe a flickering trident bit his side. Somehow, he found himself gasping on the bloody sand. He heard the crowd roar. Then his helmet was wrenched off. A slap of air, the dazzle of light, and a trident blurring toward his head. The gladiator's punctured skull, discovered 18 centuries later near the ancient city of Ephesus, tells the story of his death. The rest of his bones, analyzed by forensic anthropologists, trace the longer tale of his life. He had died in his twenties, and he had lived on a fattening diet of beans and porridge. A gladiator had little control over his diet, or any other aspect of his existence. Most gladiators were slaves, captured in war or condemned in court. The rest were freeborn volunteers, motivated by desperate poverty or deeply misguided enthusiasm. Whatever their origins, gladiators resided in a prison-like compound known as a school. There, except for the few times each year they faced the hazards of the arena, they spent their days training. A new gladiator began by practicing basic swordplay against a dummy or wooden stake. Once the master of the school had evaluated his abilities, he was assigned to one of the dozen or so fighting styles each associated with distinctive armor and specialized techniques. Under the direction of an experienced trainer, he would spend months honing his skills before his first match. Throughout the training process, his body was kept in good fighting order. His muscles were eased by expert masseuses. If he was wounded, he received medical care. And he could count on eating often, if not well. Gladiators were fed bean soup and barley gruel, mashed together and dished out in enormous quantities. This high-protein paste was unique to gladiators. Other Romans mocked it, calling gladiators barley boys. Soldiers never touched the stuff, and professional boxers and wrestlers, who might be expected to have a similar diet, guzzled meat instead. So why were gladiators and only gladiators, given barley and beans. The scientists who analyzed the gladiator bones at Ephesus suggested that the diet was intended to encourage weight gain. A few inches of fat would have shielded a gladiator's vital organs, allowing him to sustain spectacular flesh wounds without losing the ability to fight. The idea that gladiators were fat soon trickled into the mainstream media and is still routinely cited online. There is, however, no reason to assume that the heroes of the arena were out of shape. That gladiators ate a potentially fattening diet is clear. That this diet actually made them overweight is not. It seems unlikely that the masters of the gladiatorial schools, where the training emphasized speed and endurance, would have wanted, let alone encouraged, their men to become heavy. In all likelihood, Gladiators were served beans and barley simply because these foods were nutritious and cheap. Ancient authors describe gladiators as men bulging with muscle, and unless we attribute the trim and powerful fighters who strut across so many Roman mosaics to artistic license, we can safely assume that gladiators, if not as toned as modern athletes, were far from out of shape. For a longer answer, and for many other intriguing details about the ancient Greeks and Romans, check out Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants. Available wherever books are sold. Thanks for watching.